this was a considerable quake, 6.5, that struck just uh, around about four hours ago now. Uh, I was at home in my um, uh, timber building in Brooklyn, a suburb of Wellington that overlooks the harbour, and it felt like the house, the house was really shaking. It felt as though it was about to get up and walk down. It the was street. a little scary. Uh, I've been here three years now. That's the biggest quake that I have felt, and it's not something that I particularly want to get used to. I think Wellington has been waiting for what they call the big one for some time now. Wellington, the capital city, is on a fault line. The city seems to have escaped, dare I say it, relatively well from this one. There's damage to some buildings in the CBD, there's glass in the streets, and council engineers are out checking buildings now, but of course it's dark, and so perhaps the full damage won't be known until the morning. It to be worse, the level of damage. Is it because of the, the structure of the buildings, or is, is the saving grace the depth of this earthquake? Well, this was reasonably shallow, this quake, which compounds the effect of it at 6.5. Um, ever since the Christchurch earthquake, councils across the country have been going through a, an exercise of testing the structural integrity of their buildings. And, and because Wellington is on a fault, the buildings do tend to be built to move with the quake. They sway. The office building I'm in now, I'm on the third or fourth floor, and, and that certainly swayed from side to side, uh, I'm told by my colleagues who were here at the time. I'm told that Wellington is going at full bore even now. Uh, restaurants and bars are full. Uh, the police and the council have issued appeals for people to go and check on their neighbours and dare I use the word, the expression blitz spirit, but there is some of that. Most people have ready to go a hallway with torches, water, food, things that we could use for two or three days. But should we need, should we need to?